here are the problems on static equilibrium. Understand that in this chapter, the main two conditions are that the net force must be equal to zero. And the second condition is that the net torque must be equal to zero. So all of these problems can be solved using those two conditions. In this first question, you're tightening a bolt and you push perpendicularly on a wrench with a force of 165 Newton at a distance of 0 0.140 meter from the center of the bolt. And uh, what is the torque? A straightforward question. Torque is just the product of the distance and the perpendicular component of the force. So since the force is perpendicular in this case, you just have to multiply the two and this is how it looks. So that is the bolt and that's the wrench. You are applying the force at right angles to the distance. You see that? So the force of 165 newtons is perpendicular to the distance from the center of the bolt. So the answer is 23.1 newton meter. Now in the second question, uh, two children, 20 kilograms and 30 kilograms, are balanced on a seesaw and the pivot is at the center of the seesaw. Okay, the children are separated by a distance of three meters, so three there is actually the separation between the two children. At what distance from the pivot point is the small child sitting? Okay, in this case again, this force creates the clockwise torque about the pivot, and this one creates the counterclockwise torque, and both of them have to be equal. So, we take the distance of the smaller child from the pivot as x. This distance is x, so this would be 3 minus x. And uh, 20 times x should be equal to 30 times 3 minus x. Distribute, you get uh, 90 here, 30 times 3, and then 30x. Collect it and solve for it, you get x as 1.80 meter. So the smaller child is at a distance 1.80 meter uh, from the pivot, while the bigger child is at a distance of 1.20 meter from the pivot. Easy question. Number three, here you have. A 17 meter high, 11 meter long wall under construction and it's held up by brazing as shown. The wall is in stable equilibrium and you got to calculate the force exerted by each of the 10 braces. If a strong wind exerts a horizontal force of 650 Newton on each square meter of the wall. So that's 650 newtons on one meter square. So to find the total force, you got to find the area of this wall, which is 17 times 11, and uh, that will give you the total force. And then you can see that the force is acting, R1 is the force of the wind. Uh, second, you have the weight of the wall, and then you have the normal reaction, and you also have the forces along the braces, 10 of them. So as you, have, as you can see, taking that as the pivot point, you know, that's the pivot. The force of the wind creates the clockwise torque and that's going to be the force times the perpendicular distance from the pivot which is 8.5 meter and on the other side you have the force in the braces that way but when you take that you have to understand that the perpendicular distance is going to be this one okay 
Um, but because there are 10 of them, I've multiplied it with 10. And from this uh, triangle, which I've drawn here again, you can understand that if that angle is uh, 35 degrees, then this side is going to be 8.5 sine 35 because this is the opposite side. Because that's 8.5, the angle is 35 degrees, and so this is going to be 8.5 sine 35. So that's the counterclockwise torque. And then when you solve it, you get the force on the brace as the force of the wind divided by that. And then as I explained earlier, the total force by the wind is 650 times the total area. So once you get that, plug it back into the equation and calculate the force on each brace to be 2.12 times 10 to the 4 newtons. Brings us to the fourth one. The weight of the drawbridge in the figure and uh, it is given, I'm, and I'm going to bring up the figure soon, and it's supported entirely by its hinges and the opposite so shores so that the cables are slack. And what fraction of the weight is supported by the opposite shore if the point of support is directly beneath the cable attachments? So for you to understand, I need to bring the whole diagram up, and here it is. I've just let it roll, so that's the weight bridge. And you see that the cables are slack, so the forces are acting are the force at the hinges, the weight of the bridge, the normal reaction at the shore, and the force in the cable, which it says doesn't exist because the cables are slack. Now, therefore, the total, uh, the two forces are this force at the hinge and the normal reaction both acting up. So when you add them up, the total force up should be equal to the total force down. So that's what I've written here. And then when you calculate the torque, the force times 9, because I'm calculating it here, as you can see, I'm taking this as the pivot, and the force F is 9 meters away, so F times 9, and that creates the clockwise torque while the weight creates the counterclockwise torque and the weight is 7.5 meters away. So that's why you have F times 9 is equal to W times 7.5. So rearrange that and the weight is given. So plug that in. Remember this is the mass. That's why it's M times G to give you the weight. And so you would get this as the force. And then plug it back into this equation, which I have rearranged, to get you the normal force. And if you take the fraction of the two, you will get about one by sixth of the weight. And uh, that is the answer. That's what we are looking for. In the fifth question, which you uh, have not really worked out, so I'm not going to... I'm just going to let it roll. You don't need that question. And uh, I'm just going to go past that. And now you have a simple question here. A fish has been hooked and is pulling up on the line, pulling on the line rather, as shown in the figure. The pole makes an angle of 25 degrees, you can see here, with the horizontal. Distance between the point where the line is attached to the pole and the hand is given as 1.95 meter and the fish pulls on the line to create a tension of 162 newtons so now you have to resolve the tension into two so you get T cosine theta which is this and T sine theta here. Remember this is T. 
So you resolve the T into T cosine theta and T sine theta. And this is the component which is perpendicular to the length. So to calculate the torque, you multiply T cosine 30 with the length to give you the clockwise torque, okay? T cosine 30 times the length. The tension is given. Length is given. That's all you got to do and just find the torque. 274 Newton meter. And in this question, two muscles in the back of the leg pull on the Achilles tendon as shown in figure. What total force do they exert? Uh, there are two here, so that's why you find the force as 2F because you have F here and F here, so that's 2F. But remember that you got to take the component in this direction, which becomes 2F cosine 20. F is 200. And so it's 376 Newtons. Not a big deal. And this is about the head. The problem says that even when it is held upright, the center of mass is not directly above. And let me show you the problem and then you will understand that. All right, here is the diagram. The center of gravity is here. So the weight of the head is acting down, which is given as 50 Newton, creating the clockwise torque and that's where the pivot is you have the normal force acting up and then you have the force by the muscles at the back of the neck which creates the counterclockwise torque so what it is is this clockwise must be equal to the counterclockwise and this would be uh, the force of the muscle fm which we're trying to find times this distance which is five centimeters has to be changed to the meters so that's why you find it as 0 0.05 should be equal to the weight multiplied by this which is 2.5 centimeter which becomes 0 0.025 meter so when you rearrange and calculate you get 25 newton down that is the force by the muscles and then to find this, you just have to remember that the total force up should be equal to the total force down. So the force at the joint, Fj, is the sum of the other two. So it gives you 75 Newton acting up. And then again, this is based on a diagram. A father lifts his child as shown in the figure. What force should the upper leg muscle exert to lift the child? at a constant speed. Now again, I have to show you the diagram. So you can see that uh, there are two clockwise torques. One is the created by the weight of the child and the other is created by the weight of the leg. And it's both counterbalanced by this, the counterclockwise torque. So two clockwise should balance the counterclockwise and that's what I've done here this is the counterclockwise this is FQ as you can see FQ times the distance is given as two centimeter from the joint if you watch carefully you can see that that small distance so that's 0 0.02 in meters should be equal to the weight of the leg which is at a distance of 20 centimeters and um, that's why it's 0.2 the weight of the child is at a distance 0.38 meters so you add those two torques and you must get this the weight of the leg is 39.2 uh, newtons because it's 4 kilogram the weight of the child is 10 kilograms times 9.8 
So you got those two numbers, plug them both back into this and you would get FQ as 2254 newtons. And in this last problem, you have the woman uh, doing push-ups and without reading the problem, just from the diagram you can understand that, you know, this the weight of the person creates the clockwise torque. Uh, and in this case you take this as the pivot, of course. So although there is a force at the pivot, it does not create a torque. So this creates the clockwise and the force on the muscles in the hand create the counterclockwise. Okay? So all you got to do is this multiplied by 0.9 should be equal to the force here multiplied by 1.5. Okay. So when you do that, you're calculating the torque at the feet. Now the 2F is because the of the two hands, right? F is the force on each hand. So you just rearrange that and make F the subject. You are going to get the answer. In the B part, to do that, how much would be the force on the muscles? Uh, for that, you have to understand that this force is just acting 1.75 centimeters. Uh, it's 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 given in the problem 1.75 centimeters. So to get 147, you'll have to apply a much bigger force here because F T times 1.75 should be equal to F times 20, which makes F T a much bigger number. That's, uh, 1680 newtons. Now I went through this problem set as quick as possible but you can always pause the video and try to understand and if you have any questions please do not hesitate to write to me and thank you. Good luck.